questions. I've been in the business for a long time, so it stands to reason that I've got quite a few friends on Facebook that are really talented Photoshop experts. And occasionally I see their beautiful work. And sometimes they do things with different exposures, really cool effect, and it's done usually at night where you want to shoot the background and the foreground and then blend them together. Now, Photoshop's had amazing masking techniques, selection techniques forever to do these kinds of things. It still requires quite a bit of master effort to get it done. So I want to show you something that is in Photoshop Elements. I know I kind of fooled you in here thinking this was a Photoshop tip, but stick around because think of this as a little plugin. It's not, it's really an application, but it's just this one little tool that you want to do these one little operations where you blend two exposures. So start by shooting with a flash on and with a flash off. And I'm going to show you a couple examples. Let's go have a look. So here we have our first shot. You can see the background is fairly dark. The people in the front are in focus. Uh, now you take another shot where you expose differently and obviously the people in the front don't look that good. So we need to take both of these shots and we hold shift down. In Photoshop Elements, you have a bin down here at the bottom and we select both of these and then up in the top right, we're going to something called guided editing. And when we click there, it takes us into our guided edits and we've got lots of different guided edits. And the one we're going to use is down here in something called Photo Merge Exposure. So I've got the two selected over on the left and when I click that, it brings me into this new guided edit. And the first thing it's going to do is try to blend these together automatically and it never looks good. So forget the automatic, go right to manual over here on the right. This will now split our screen into two sides. On the right hand side, you drag in, for me, the best one is the background. The one, whoops, this one over here, that's it. So I try to find the one with the most amount of information. And in this example, it is the background. So we're gonna try to blend the foreground over here. On the right hand side, we have a pencil and an eraser. And there's no hard and fast rule about how big to make your brush, but I do make it a little bit bigger. I'm just hitting the bracket keys here, uh, up and down, square bracket keys. So I'm just gonna drag down here, and you can see automatically on the right, it's added almost all of them. There's a bit more to add over on the left. I'll just click inside there, maybe over on her shoulder, and boom, like that. Oh, a little bit of her hair up in the top, so let me just click inside inside there. Now you can actually show the regions over on the right hand side. You can see where it's calculating uh, those two operations. When we're ready, we can just click done. And there's our example. <laughs> That's really awesome. Let's zoom in and look at that. Okay, maybe I missed a bit of her hair, but look at the edges. They're beautifully done. This doesn't give us any masks to play with, but in a lot of times, this is just gonna give you a perfect result if you shot them correctly. Okay, so that's just selecting one image. Sometimes we need to uh, select and deselect. In the next example, I'll show you how to do that. So let's try these two down here. So again, there's our foreground shot with the flash, background shot uh, with the flash turned off, shift select both of these and go back to guided editing over here and again our exposure setting and it brings us in again it's going to do the automatic thing for us which we know we're going to just bypass and go right to manual okay thank you very much photoshop manual now it it did do something that that's really important to understand and i'm, I'm just going to go down to the bottom and show you that we do have some advanced options in here uh, for lining things up. So Photoshop actually has the same uh, capability where it looks at the pixels of two images and will align them. And it's not just moving the X, Y coordinates, it's actually distorting the image. So if you're not shooting on a tripod and you moved your camera a little bit, or even if you zoomed a little bit closer, Photoshop Elements is smart enough to blend those two together, auto align those. Photoshop can do that too. So that's the first thing it's doing while it's thinking. Sometimes it might have problems. And if it does, over here, you've got alignment tools and it asks you to place three markers in three known positions on both and then try to align again. In our example, it's not a problem. It's getting it right the first time. 
So just like last time, I'm going to drag my uh, background image over here to the right. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to click from the top of her head down to the bottom. Boom. Just like that. Now it looks good, except you can see that it, it started to get a bit of the fence in the background and the fence continues on. I think it'll look much better if the fence is not there altogether. So right now on the left hand side, our foreground image is the one with her uh, actually in um, the view with, with, with the flash shot. If we select this one over here and we now paint inside here, we're forcing that darker one inside there. So double clicking, double clicking, you're either painting what you want or what you don't want until you finally get the final result. And over on the right hand side again, click done, give it a second, and it pulls it off perfectly. Look at the edges inside here. That is a gorgeous job, the same kind of job you would do inside Photoshop, except Photoshop Elements is smart enough to work that out for us. So next time you're trying to blend two exposures, great to use Photoshop, all of your wonderful masking techniques, but I've just shown you with one simple stroke of a paintbrush with guided editing in Photoshop Elements 10 on both Mac and Windows, you'll be able to get this done much quicker. Thank you.